So the branch is not David and David is not the branch. But they are birds of a feather. And, uh, and so are we if we abide in him. Let's have a look at his church. Acts chapter 2. The book of Acts has a lot to say about the Lord taking a people for his name from amongst the Gentiles. It also quotes Old Testament scriptures that have only been partly fulfilled. The unfulfilled parts will be fulfilled as the Pentecostal wheat harvest ends and the tears are burnt up and the tabernacle of David that has fallen is raised up. In Acts chapter 1, 8, we'll look at this in a moment. We see that we're to be his witnesses in this time period and that the kingdom has been deferred. At least the kingdom coming to this earth has been deferred until after the harvest. In Acts chapter 2, we read about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We'll see this shortly. And its relationship to the uh, building of this congregation made of Jews and Gentiles. Some from the lost tribe, some not. And in Acts chapter 15, we read about the, the calling out of the Gentiles to his name and the raising up of David's tabernacle. So this Pentecostal period is related to the tabernacle of David that has fallen. After this gathering of the wheat, it's time to raise up this tabernacle. And, uh, and there's going to be a, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And all throughout the Pentecostal period, there has been outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Not only in Acts chapter 2, but throughout the church age. There's been moves of God's Spirit. Yeshua said, I'll build my church, my congregation, my kahila, my dart. And, and the gates of hell will not prevail against her. So we see through the Protestant Reformation the Lord going to work against Catholicism, against Babylon, against Rome. God raised up a standard through many of the martyrs that died. And... Um, Many of the people in America are here because of their witness, because of their blood. And America's forgotten it. And uh, the Lord will not hold this nation guiltless. But he will bring his remnant through the fire and through the flood. And he's not going to let you go. But just hold on to him. Because we're going to go through quite a ride at some stage. So, the book of Acts is about Gentile salvation. Gathering in the wheat. And we're going to see some stuff because we haven't quite seen the end of it. And it's going to be a bang. Let's have a look at these scriptures in more detail. The other unfulfilled parts of these prophecies quoted in Acts are still awaiting fulfilment. This may occur very soon, after the Pentecostal period church age draws to a close. And I think this is going to be a stage by stage thing. And um, each time we go to a new chapter, there's going to be a bigger cutting off. So, we're coming to this, uh, uh, this time of the end and the lost tribes are awakening. And few will be saved. Few. And I pity the young people that don't fear the Lord. Because many of them are going to be destroyed. Because though the house of Israel be like the sand of the seashore, yet only a remnant shall be saved. And God is good. God is good. Big things are coming. We're in the midst of an awakening already. So hold on and hold the line. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, we read, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me, 
both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. There's the house of Judah and the house of Israel. And unto the utmost parts of the earth. We may wait for some penguins to be saved, I don't know, but we're coming towards the end. We're certainly uh, coming towards the end. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight ten days before that Pentecostal outpouring, forty days after its crucifixion. The Lord knows how to count as well as how to spell. So here we have uh, a, a picture of the, um, the time period we're in. We're in that harvest period. We've had the early rain, if you like, the former rain. The Jews were in the land. There was a temple. They had possession of Jerusalem. They were in Benjamin's territory. Benjamin's a touchstone between Judah and, uh, and Joseph. And Jerusalem is in Benjamin's territory between the northern Shomron, Samaria, Ephraim's capital, Joseph's capital, and, and the southern kingdom of Judah. Benjamin connects those two, uh, those two brothers. And um, Father, it's my prayer that Judah and Joseph would be one. Now we're coming to a time when the Jews and Israelites will be back in the land. There will be another temple established in righteousness, not by the new world order, thank you. Get your dirty hands off. Jerusalem will again be in total possession by Israel in Benjamin's territory. And the latter rain shall come. So, the harvest is almost over. So, we've seen uh, a sequence of events preceding Yeshua's kingdom. He was heralded by John the Baptist who came in the spirit of Elijah. Later on, we'll see towards the second coming, the return of physical Elijah. John the Baptist heralded it the coming of Messiah in a veiled way, in a way that the sons of Joseph could recognise and sadly many of Judah couldn't. Messiah Yeshua offers the kingdom and it was rejected. For us. If he came a few generations earlier, maybe the Jews would have accepted him, but he came at a time when they had almost dropped the ball. Yet thankfully for, for us, the Jews were still in the land and um, the disciples, the Jewish disciples, recorded for us the, the words of life in the New Testament. So, we have so much to be grateful for. And through even the rejection of our Lord, we have come in by his blood. And uh, the Lord is not going to hold America, Australia or the world guiltless for turning away from the blood of his covenant and treating it as a small thing. It cost him his own son. And there is, there is a great price for rejecting the son of God. He gave us everything. He said, Father... Where are you? And there was no answer. And he was there naked on a cross alone. His disciples had forsaken him. But the women were there. And John, John was there. So, the temple was destroyed 40 years later and the Jews were scattered. But we had the new covenant writings and God's spirit was moving with power amongst the Gentiles. The fields were white unto harvest and though, though many of the Jews came to the Lord, many rejected. And the Gentiles were coming in by the droves. They forgot the, the Sabbath and feasts and adopted pagan ones. But God's building program continued. 
And whoever called upon the name of the Lord was saved. Now we're coming to a time where the Jews are returning to the land. The clock is ticking once more. We've had World Wars 1 and 2. They're upheavals. Now we're awaiting the regathering of the lost tribes. We're going to see another world war. It just seems that when God, when Israel starts to come together, we're starting to see some stuff. And uh, America is a God-blessed land. It is so beautiful. This is a beautiful building. And I thank God. And in Australia, we are blessed beyond belief with so much. And it's all going to come to an end because there's a new chapter coming. And uh, the Lord is going to put together Israel through blood and fire. And if we're not ready, it doesn't matter. The Lord operates to a certain timetable. We see it in Genesis chapter 1. And uh, he made the sun, moon and stars for days and years and Moadim seasons. And in in, uh, a week's time, we're going to come into Pentecost. By the way, I didn't put this talk together for Pentecost. It just worked out that way. So the Lord is good. I had on my heart to share about David. And um, it's all about Pentecost. How about that? Praise the Lord. So... We're going to see a regathering to Israel, not only of the Jews in unbelief, but believing Jews, following the Torah, being joined by their brothers. What a big deal that is. What an amazing big deal and what a sanctification for God's name. And we're going to see wars. We're going to see Gog invade Israel after we are gathered to the mountains of Israel. And God is going to destroy Gog and all the nations and Israel shall know that he is the Lord. And his name is going to be sanctified in all the earth. There will be no time for CNN or BBC to be able to tell us that uh, white is black and black is white. And we evolve from monkeys and uh, all that sort of thing. God is going to be known by all nations. And uh, the Lord is going to restore all things. And he's going to send Elijah back. So I thank you, Father, for your grace. We don't deserve it, but we need it. And we thank you, Father God, that uh, uh, the President of the United States is not going to stop what you have planned. And everything they do to prevent it is going to hasten it. So I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, that you are the King. And we long, Father God, for you to sanctify your name before all nations. We're going to, when the house of Israel and the house of Judah are gathered together, there's going to be the re-establishment of the Davidic monarchy. You see, when a person's cut in half like Jacob and Judah's over here and Israel's over there, in some way he's dead. You put all those part, parts back together and the heart starts to beat. And the brain starts to work. The heart is David in some sense. And and the head. In some sense, David was known for his heart. He had a heart after the Lord. And he's someone that we can all agree on, both Judah and Israel. We love David because we see his heart. And then he's going to bring the the Kohanim to life. And that's what the story of Lazarus is all about. Because Lazarus was a man, he was a friend of Yeshua, but that whole uh, 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 story in uh, John chapter 11, that true story of the raising of Lazarus, Lazarus in in Hebrew is Eliezer, representing the priesthood, because Eliezer is the leader of the Kohanim. He's the head son over Etamar and over all the priests and all the Levites. So when God restores uh, Israel... The Davidic kingdom's coming together, and so is the Levitical priesthood. And we haven't seen the Davidic kingdom king ruling. Uh, not in Yeshua's time, it wasn't ruling. Uh, it was only uh, before the Babylonian exile. So this is a long time in coming. 